In this video, we're going to show you how to resample an image. Now, when you resample an image, it is the uh, changing of the actual number of pixels that you have. Okay. If I were to check out this particular image's statistics, it's say image, image size. It is ex a pretty small picture. It's 1024 by 768. That's how many pixels are visible. Uh, that is a tiny tiny image okay the other thing is it says the document size now when document size that has to do with how those pixels actually get represented if you were to print out this 1024 by 768 image at a resolution of 72 pixels per inch it'd be 14 inches wide but that honestly would look horrible okay you can change the resolution by turning off resample now you see watch what happens when I go to change the resolution we can actually determine how uh, big we should print this at I'm gonna go 300 that is the uh, resolution for when you are holding a picture in your hand or looking at it pretty closely you want 300 pixels per inch so that 1024 by 768 will only yield about 3.4 by 2.5 inches so it's a tiny tiny picture okay now, if you were wanting to uh, actually change the pixels, okay, not just how the pixels are uh, laid out on a piece of paper, you would check this resample image button. Now, when I go to change it uh, here, if I want to make it say, um, let's say 10 inches wide, I'd click 10 inches, and so it'd take 10, multiply it by 300, and I'd end up with 3,000 pixels across. So this actually increases the number of pixels. Now there is no magic way of enhancing a picture to uh, make it look great when you enlarge it. But Photoshop does have some interesting software to do it. Now I'm going to first show you what it looks like using a nearest neighbor enlargement. Okay. Now before I do that, um, I need to probably zoom in on it so I can show you what it looks like. I'm going to cancel this for a second and I'm going to zoom in on a particular region here. Okay, so here are some pixels and you can kind of see we zoom in we start to get the pixel grid. If I zoom back out, all right, I'm going to go image and image image size and I'm going to tell it to resample the image, tell it to do nearest neighbor and I am going to let's say shrink the image. So I'm going to make it a tinier image. I'm going to, I don't know, make it 600 pixels across. So I'm going to click the top one here and I'm going to make it 600 pixels across. And when I click OK, you'll see it starts to look blockier. You see how that looks? OK. I'm going to step backward. I'm going to do image, image size. This time I'm going to make it larger. So I'm going to go 300 pixels per inch. And now it's really big, 4,000. Uh, and I'm going to tell it to be nearest neighbor again. So now, honestly, it just looks like I zoomed in on it. I haven't, I haven't actually done anything. I just zoomed in on it. So you see, the blocks are just bigger. So if it had one block, maybe it turned it into, you know, four squares next to each other. Okay. I'm going to step backward again. And this time, I'm going to use one of the other algorithms. So I'm going to do image, image size. And this time, I'm going to take a look at these. Now, bilinear is just a, a way of blending pixels together as you um, double them up and quadruple them up as you're enlarging uh, or shrinking. Now, the bicubic is an algorithm that me is used when you want to do smooth gradients. Uh, bicubic smoother is best for enlargement. Bicubic sharper is best for reduction. But in CS6, we have this advantage here, bicubic automatic. If I click on that, if I make it bigger, make it 300 again, that's a pretty big increase. You see, I don't have those squares coming through. You see, those squares aren't, you don't see the big blocks. That's because what it's done is it's actually blended some of those pixels together. Now, it doesn't look perfect, okay? And, and that's not the point. You're not trying to make it necessarily perfect, but you're trying to do the best you can with what you got. So if you have to enlarge, CS6 just use image adjustment I'm sorry image image size 
and by Cubic Automatic. Otherwise, when you're in other versions, you have to actually choose one of these. Okay, and of course those are still there. Now, constraining proportions. Let me show you what that does. Okay, I'm going to step backward again, return to the original image, and if I go image, image size, and let's say I am changing this, and I turn off constrained proportions, and I make the height be 10 still, and then we'll make the width be 7 inches. Okay, let's see how that looks. So you see how that smashed it? Okay, so when you are, I'm going to step backward again, if I do the image size again, if you have constrained proportions there, you can make sure that if I change one, if I make that 7, notice that the other features all adapt to that. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. On this one, I want you to create a big version of it where you increase the total number of pixels and I want you to create a smaller version of it where you shrink it down. Let's say the big one, let's make it be let's say 300 pixels across so I'm 300 pixels per inch I mean so we'll have you do that so it would be image, image size and do 300 and I want you to save that one. So let me see here. Do that again on the constrain. Okay. So make sure you get that one in. And then I want you to do one where you make it a tinier inches. Make it maybe, a, let's say, a three inch wide image. So see if you can make it do a three inch wide image at 300 pixels per inch. So I should have a couple files. One should be 900 by 675 and one was up in the 4000s there. So make those and that's it for this video.